morning. Cheers. Cheers. Welcome to Toad TV. I am Mary Beth. I am Helen. And we are the creative hands and minds behind Toad Hollow. And I am having citrus sunrise tea. And oh my God, it's perfect. So am I. Mine is just a little hot. Oh, it's absolutely perfect. Mm. These mugs are very good because this has been sitting around for about 20 minutes. And still, excuse me for drinking on camera. I'm too scalding to eat. Okay, so, um, whatever you do, it. <laughs> where? <laughs> um, oh, um, so, welcome to Toe TV. It is Friday. December 4th. Yes. Hey, I sent you something on Facebook. Did um, you? yes. Okay. It was, um, something that I'm interested in and I invited you. Okay. December 24th through January 1st, maybe. Um, one of the New York City ballets is doing the Nutcracker online streaming. Oh, definitely. And okay. I thought you would be interested yeah. in that. Helen's much more interested in ballet than I am, but it's, I mean, the music and everything. So, um, it is, uh, maybe you could put the link down Yeah, because, um, I got a, I got something from the Bronx Zoo, where it's today, it's only till today that you get the 20% off, but they are obviously struggling, um, and what they're doing is they're selling virtual meet and greets with the animals. And it's a personal meet and greet with animals. Oh my God. It is not cheap. Um, like the sloth, you get 15 minutes where you get to talk to the sloth and, <laughs> and the sloth's handler. <laughs> but they want it to be interactive. They want you to ask questions and um, they'll talk back. And it's it's one-on-one. -on -one. And you, um, for I think the silver one, you get three sign-ins. So three different uh, Zooms can come in okay. to the thing. And it's 15, it's, it's a short 15 minutes, but like the sloth is $150, which, you know, you're donating to the Bronx Zoo. Right. Um, and you're meeting a sloth. Honestly, really. Um, but they have, peng you can do the penguin, you can do a warthog. Oh my God. Yeah, and you can pick your time. So today, I'll put a link uh, to the, down below because uh, through tonight, midnight tonight, there's a code to get 20% off. Okay. And the, But the, there's a gold membership too. I forget how much they are. They're like 400, I think, but you get to bring in eight uh, different okay. um, sign-ins. So you could have eight different households with multiple people in each household right. coming in to do this mer virtual meet and greet. Um, so I just, I thought that was, that was a really interesting way around what's going on right now. And it's not like, hey, just give us money. Right. We're giving you a little something for it. Oh, but yeah. most of what you're doing is a don't You know most of what you're doing is a donation, but you do get 15 minutes. And I mean, if, you, if you've got three different people signing in, that's $50 a household. Right. So you could have, I mean, $50 to go to the zoo. Exactly. I mean, you're not going to get out for less than $50. Granted, you're going to spend more than 15 minutes there. But as Helen said, but it's you're not going to be up front and close with a sloth. Right. So yeah, no, that's that's really cool. Yeah. So I thought that was a really interesting thing. Okay. Um, and then I did want to mention one other thing. Um, you would think that this podcast is sponsored by people, right? We're not. <laughs> um, we're open. Right? <laughs> we're not averse to that. <laughs> um, we bought um, for my my nephew Braden's birthday in October. We weren't going to see him, so um, I'm pretty sure it was an ad on Instagram or Facebook. It paid off for them. No, no, no. We searched them out because we wanted to... Oh, it started by way of best of toys for certain ages, and this was mentioned in one of the best of lists. And we didn't want to buy it from the giant larger online groups. We wanted to find a local to him-ish toy store... Um, where we would be getting something for him and also supporting his local. Right. So we found Wicked Uncle. It's And they've got a great online thing. But they have got really, really cool toys. We got him a marble maze that they give you cards and it's got little blocks with colors on it and you set them up. Um, you build a tower with the colors in the correct order and then when you drop the marble in, it goes down or sideways or diagonally down right. it doesn't come out where you think it will and part of it is you guess where it will come out 
in based the thing. on um, the card that you it's have. It's really cool. It's interactive. It's fun. Something um, he can do with his brothers. But it makes you think. It's not just a shoot 'em up type of thing. Right. Um, so it's we not got him Fortnite. Yeah, which is what he loves. Um, we got him that, and what else? Did, we got him another one too. Um, yeah, because we got something from uh, Montclair. Oh, we got him a game that was, um, it's a challenge game where it's how many marshmallows can you stuff in your mouth and everybody tries to stuff the same, the number of marshmallows in their mouth. It's like oh, a yeah, fun, it, it's a fun family thing, yeah. Family thing to do, but it's, um, it was more. And I think there was boy. also a little more science yeah. related to it than how many marshmallows can you stuff There were a couple of different things yeah. that you could, there are a bunch of different questions that you could do, but it was just like a fun thing to do with a group. Cause I, we were thinking stuck inside, um, not being able to go to school and hang out with your friends and that kind of thing. These are things that all the boys can do together. They can Plus, do it with their dad. Brayden loves to play games with his dad. Yeah. So we wanted to find new and interesting things. So for Christmas, they sent me an email and said, hey, we have this idea. They have a horn for your scooter or your bike. It has over 50 sounds, including a UFO, a roaring lion, an elephant, a fire engine, all these different things. We have gotten two of them. We're also getting scooters because they w went through the scooters that sister number three gave them a couple of years ago. So we're replacing the scooters and giving the two older boys this bell that they can just let everybody in the neighborhood know right. that they are coming. Um, You're I welcome, thought, St. Louis. I thought that was the greatest idea. Yeah. I love this present. So also... We placed the order. We placed the order on, yeah, uh, two days ago. We placed it on Wednesday. Yesterday it was delivered. Yesterday morning, practically. I mean, it was less That's than, ridiculous. I think it was less than 24 hours that they got it to us. I mailed my mother an advent calendar on Monday. She lives two hours away from us in North Jersey. It's, it's hanging out in Philadelphia yeah, right it's now. still not here. It's not there. It's in Philadelphia. And yet, from Virginia... I'm pretty sure they're based in Virginia. It's either Baltimore or Virginia, yeah. They managed to get it to me. But one of the other things they have is you can set up birthday reminders so that I now have all three of the boys in there with their ages so that they can send me reminders when it comes close to the birthday. Hey, Colin's birthday is coming up. This is what we think is great for a seven-year-old. Yeah. And I love that yeah. because... I do not speak seven-year-old boy very well. I'm trying, but I don't. <laughs> um, so if you can help me and tell me really cool, interesting, educational games that they're actually going to enjoy doing or fun things that they can play with that are different that you're not going to find everywhere, I'm on board. And they ship to... Um, they'll gift wrap and ship to... Your recipient, if mm -hmm. you so choose. We wanted the Christmas gifts to come here because we're putting them with the scooters and blah, blah, blah. But for Braden's gift, we had it sent directly to his house. Um, and and I believe... Plenty of time. They went... Um, it came with birthday confetti-flavored popcorn as well. Yes. Yeah, there was the add-on, right. Yeah. Okay. So, I love this company. Wicked Uncle. It's yeah. a great place. We'll put a link down below. Okay. All right. So, let's talk crafty. Should we do my birthday? Yes. Oh, one more thing. Knit and Escape started yesterday. Um, they had a whole bunch of people coming through and attending and everything. Yeah, sure they, they had really good numbers. Yeah, so hopefully you guys are being able are able to take part in it. Um, and they're doing so much fun stuff. I yeah, mean, we trivias were, and... We're doing a trivia session today at 1230. We're going to be on the Zoom call for that. Yeah. Um, so we'll be a part of that, and we're donating the prize for that. Um, so we'll be working with uh, Christy Glass on that. But uh, they have really interesting classes and all sorts of things. It's $10 to be part of the marketplace and then you get to sit in on like the virtual knit nights and um, a bunch of different demos that are going on that you don't have to pay for. It's all part of the $10 fee. Yeah. Um, I know at 3.30 this afternoon, um, Asylum. Asylum Fibers is going to be answering all sorts of questions about how she dyes yarn in a studio apart or an apartment in New York City. Yeah. We're going to be uh, tuning in for that because I want to know how she does that. I can barely do it, and I'm not in an apartment. Right. <laughs> so I want to know how she does it because her colors are gorgeous. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, 
So check uh, check out the In Escape twenty twenty. Yeah. Okay, birthday. Okay. So yesterday, what did you do yesterday? Yesterday, I opened beautiful paper. So it's a graphic forty five set for the Ephemera Queen. Look at those colors. Well, they're beautiful. Obviously, Spike does not think that they are Spike colors. So there are um, 12 by 12 papers in here and then journal cards and tags and all sorts of lovely things. And Meredith knows my color palette, so. And then I got an ephemera packet to go with it. So you get all those little extras. Very exciting. And, and a duplicate of the journal card. Since because you know, there, there are, are two, two of us. Or somebody didn't read the description properly and just was going through and ordering things willy-nilly. We'll just go with there are two of us. <laughs> so that was yesterday. We have to get the Advent. For two. Yeah. And then today I picked number 12. Distress ink and sorry. rustic wilderness and crackling campfire. These are the new 2020 colors. Look at those. Can you turn this one? They're perfect. So for fabric, I'm a Tula Pink junkie, and for paper, total Tim Hunt, Tim Tim Hunt, Tim Holtz junkie. Graphic 45, Tim Holtz, Yep. and Photo Play. I can't wait to try these. Yeah. Create an aged look on papers, fibers, photos, and more. And I was just uh, playing with ink this morning. Playing with my uh, blending techniques. So tomorrow in my journal, these will go. Excellent. For our advent calendars that we put together, this is uh, yesterday's fabric that you got. We had uh, winter, fall, and it was, oh my god, these dogs have a lot to say. Spring and summer. And also for day three, there was a quilt pattern as a little extra. Right. So uh, something, a uh, cool quilt pattern for fabric quarters. That we're going to try. Fat quarters, not fabric. Right. That we're going to try and do in 2021. We're going to try and put it together. <laughs> we're going to see. And then today's fabric a coolsy buzz with a really it's a, like a teal background so that's today's fabric all right all right so day number three for the yarn was airport scene because there's almost always somebody's, somebody's coming in somebody's leaving somebody's stuck in the airport so this is airport scene And then today's yarn is the big city. Because you always got the small town and the big city. Gal, so guy, the big going city. to the big city. Just a really gorgeous blue. So if you put these two together, this really brings out the blues in uh, this one. Yeah. So days three and four. I am still working on my Radvent. <laughs> coming together. I did get a notification from Amba O'Brien that, um, cause obviously I'm not the only one that's having a little bit of issues. She said that it does get easier the first couple of your practice ones and then you have the pattern down pat and you just fly through it. We shall see, cause I haven't taken it out again yet. I'm still working <laughs> on it, but. We start with what we were working on on Thursday. Wednesday? Yesterday was Thursday, Wednesday, Wednesday. I'm going to move my basket over. I have my basket of project. I'm going to anger somebody because she is sitting on the table that I made for myself. All right. I wanted to do a 
Wednesday patchwork. Wednesday we were making stockings for decor. Yeah. So I wanted to make a patchwork stocking. So what I did was I took six pieces of fabric, measured them out to the right size. I think it was like an 11 by 15. And then I put my stocking template on top of them. And then I just drew lines in haphazard ways and cut with my rotary cutter through the fabric and the paper. And then I had piles, six different piles of pieces that I put the matching paper piece on top. And what I did was to make sure that I didn't get the same fabric in each stocking. For uh, pile one, I left it alone. For pile two, I took the top one and moved it to the bottom. For pile three, I took the top two and moved them to the bottom. Oh, okay. And so on down the road so that I had um, different fabrics in each one. And then I, I pieced them all together. I sewed them all together. So I have six stocking, almost stockings, that are sewn together like this. Each of them has one of each of the six pieces of fabric. So that's what I have. I have six um, and two of them. I actually got to the point where I was quilting them to my, I would say um, batting the middle piece of the quilting fabric but um, I'm actually going to use it as the inside of the stocking. So it's a piece of flannel, just a plain piece of flurry, floral, florally flannel um, that I just sewed it to. So the first one I oh, did one going across just um, maybe half inch in between each line, just quilted straight across. It's really hard to see on the camera. But here on the red, you can kind of see okay. where the stitching is. So she's just got straight lines going. Right. right. So that um, I did that, and I was okay with it, but I didn't love it. For the second one, I just went around the outside of each piece, so she, and I much prefer that. You outlined the seams. I did. So um, wherever the two fabrics come together, there I did a quarter inch on either side of the seam. So now what I need to do is put together the back and the back is going to be a, a single sheet of um, fabric. It's not going to be pieced together. It's just going to be one um, piece of fabric just because it's going to be against the wall or the fireplace or whatever. You're not going to really see it. And then I'll put the flannel on the inside of that piece as well. And um, then what I'll do is I will cut out the a cuff. Um, stocking and sew it all together. Okay. So are you going to fold this down as your... I don't know yet. Okay. Maybe. I might. Okay. I'm not sure. I haven't figured out the cuff yet, but that's where I am. So when I am done, I will have six crazy pieced stockings, but as of right now, I have six partials. Uh, my stocking, um, I found something on Pinterest. Um, it was a tutorial, and I will put the link down below because it's great for uh, if you have a jelly roll that you haven't used yet, or you have pieces from a jelly roll, or you have scraps and you just want to cut strips because you can make the strips as thin or as wide as you want. Um, and uh, it was, she has a easy construction. Um, and this is my stocking so I just did the one so I could have it finished um, and that's so you just use uh, the different strips and you sew them onto the batting and then I have the back and I made the inside just a little bit taller and folded it over and top seam top stitched for to cover the raw edge so I have a cool little stocking. You do. It's really pretty. And it was a fat, uh, jelly roll that's been sitting around for a little bit. So I just opened it up and I have uh, the second one all cut and ready to go. And there you go. It's so pretty. Yeah. And the second one, um, the reindeer, because they're reindeer 
in this one, but the jelly roll was cut, so you're just cutting straight through the reindeer. So the second one is going to have the actual reindeer in it. Okay. So, but I love the colors of this. Oh, the colors fabric are line. So, so pretty. Um, and this was from our stash, but uh, yeah, so fun stockings. Yeah. And put together in an hour. Great project to do if you have new little kids in the family. Yeah. Or you just want to have stockings as decoration. You already have, you, you have your tried and true stockings. Right. But uh, you want to have stockings as decoration. So. Yeah. Okay. All right. So yesterday was the 24 hour fabric day or uh, craft day. And um, we were going back and forth as to what we should do. Um, a lot of discussion about quilts, maybe doing a quilt. Um, and then we decided what we really wanted to do was work on a bag. We had ordered some, um, and this was all done on Wednesday night because we were trying to be ready to go, know what we were doing, right? hit the ground running on Thursday. So we had ordered um, a couple of um, patterns from buyannie.com that are bags. She has really cool bags. This one is the case in point. Um, she does it for crochet hooks or interchangeable needles. I am making this one in particular for English paper piecing. I'm gearing it towards having all my English paper piecing pieces together because I thought it's got zippered pockets in this little fold over pages so that um, if you have a zippered pocket that has just all your hexy, your paper hexies in it. And then another one that's got um, your hexies that are basted. And then in the bottom, you can put together the pieces that are already pieced together type of thing. So that was my goal. Um, and these bags are for personal yes. use. These are not future bags or anything. This right. is just bags that we're making. They're very labor intensive bags. Um, As so we'll see. Yeah. So th uh, Wednesday night, we, we finally decided 10 o'clock at night when we're doing the last walk with the dogs, finally figured out we want to do the bags. That's what we really wanted to yeah, do. Yeah. Cause it was like, do we do the bags? Do we do the quilt? Do we do the bags? Do we do it? And quilt? then we're like, we don't have the zipper for the bag. So we're going to do the quilt. But then we figured, Oh, well we could use because you need a 38-inch or a 38-inch zipper. And I thought, well, we could use two 18-inch zippers and right. do it that way instead. So back on the bags. <laughs> Excited about doing the bags. Come back, and we decided what fabric lines we were going to use because mm -hmm. we decided we'd take the, most of the decision-making out of our hands and use a fabric line that's already been picked for you. All the pieces have been picked. So we literally, at 11 o'clock at night, we're picking out the cutting table is full of all our Tula pink stash because we were doing it in Tula. So um, we worked our way down and Helen picked hers and I picked mine, went to bed thinking we are in good <laughs> shape. Okay. Wake up Thursday morning, picking the pieces. There, there are lots of different pieces. Picking the fabric that goes on each piece takes a very long time. Also, in her direction, she gives you the most efficient way to pick fabric and cut the fabric. Right, because basically so she gives it. you two different fabrics. You take fabric one, that's the outside of everything. Right. And you quilt the entire piece, the 18 by 32 inch piece. And then you cut it. And then you cut it apart. But you need like a yard and a quarter of each or whatever. Um, and we, most of our Tula stash right now is fat quarters, uh, half yards. Right. So um, we had to complicate things. Besides, um, that's not plus, the way Tula does it. Right. Tula does it where she's got cool contrasting fabrics. It's not all the same. Right. So, so we, we want to be Tula pink. So we had to figure out how we would do it so that we wouldn't need the full yard and we could use half yards and fat quarters. And we figured that out. Then we had to pick Okay. Which fabrics we're so, going to use. This is my journal that we were showing you before. This is what I was doing the other day. I was trying to figure out how to get all the pieces out of a half yard or a fat quarter. Because I was trying to do it so that I could do different fat quarters. I figured out how to do it. And then I changed my mind and did it differently. <laughs> however, however, we went from 
only needing two fabrics to each. We decided we each wanted like four or five. Yeah. So then we had to pick which four or five. This. This was a long process. It's not easy. Then we had to cut all the pieces. Also a long process. And then you have to sew in the soft and uh, iron in the soft and stable. And quilt. And quilt the pieces. I finally sat down in front of the sewing machine at four o'clock yesterday afternoon to put my first stitch in and that was just quilting. I have nowhere near ready to start uh, construction if you're gonna cut separate pieces. So I now have a front and a back of my case with the insides. I have, these are gonna be my pockets. Look at that gorgeous seahorses and whales. Oh my God, I love Tula Pink's fabric so much. And it's got matching fabric on the inside. Then there is a page that has pockets in it. That That is part of it. All orange and pink seaweed. And then blue swirls on the inside. So, and then I have... I will say that if you are not a fan of color, Tula is not for you. No. This is going to be, she uses mesh. Um, we do not have the mesh, so we are using fabric instead. So this is going to be mesh pockets on the inside. Well, not mesh, but just pockets on the inside. There are also going to be vinyl pockets on the inside, so I have to do the vinyl part. And then I have... This is going to be my zipper. Oh, and about three o'clock yesterday afternoon, we found out, oh, look, we have 40 inch zippers. <laughs> we actually ordered them another time we were thinking of doing it. We've had these patterns sitting on the kitchen table for probably three months. Right. And we keep thinking, oh, we're going to take time to do it and because we know it's going to take time. And we keep putting it off because, no, we have to do this and no, we have to do that. So the 24-hour craft day was a great yeah. day to get started because now... You give yourself permission to just do what you want. Right. And also, you're at the point where I can go forward now. Yeah. The important decision making has been made. So that is going to be going around the outside of the, the bag. And this is going to be going around the inside of the bag. It just looks like a mess of color right now. But it's when it's all to together, it's going to be really pretty. And then um, my, excuse me handles i'm using the cotton webbing on one side but then we got uh tula pink's ribbons from renaissance ribbons so that um we sewed i sewed that on so that's going to be my handle it will be coming up like that so i'm very excited about putting it together um and as i said the the agonizing decision making part is done now all i have to do is actually put together the construction yeah we are now to construction which should make th things go a lot faster and also next time i do it i'm going to know um a lot more about how to do it so that maybe instead of cutting two separate pieces for the front and the back i cut one long piece that's a little bit quilt bigger it. Yeah. quilt it and then cut it down so I picked, um, I was picking from her monkey wrench uh, collection. So my front and back of the outside are the monkey. So I have those pieces cut and quilted. The inside are pink frogs. I'm not sure you can. So right there, he's a frog. She's very subtle. Because uh, after we cut one of them, I'm like, oh my God, look. These are to go around the edging of the bag. So outside, inside, those are all quilted. Then I have pages of pockets as well. Um, so one side is going to be the bananas and the other side is the floral print, but is not the best one okay so then here's another page with the bananas and then here's the other floral print 
and you can see if you look okay right here this right here is a parrot and this is another parrot facing each other so it could be two parrots or if you put them together it's an owl it's an owl her, it's just her detail yeah. is amazing so those are my pieces they're all quilted i'm going to have pockets What are the spots, which are also ladybugs, and my handle, like my Beth has got the cotton mesh and then the monkey ribbon. So, so yours is monkey wrench? Monkey wrench, yeah. Mine is Zuma. That was the name of my collection. So, ready to for construction. Maybe this weekend. Maybe. We will see. Yeah. I kind of want to try and work on it tomorrow. Yeah. That's my, my goal is to work on it tomorrow and try and get what, have it done. But I'm not going with having it done. I'm just trying to get like a couple pieces together. Yeah. So it starts looking like a bag. Well, I think now it should start to go a little I bit have, faster. I have to get Velcro first. I have, oh, I have can't to put together Velcro. my thing. Right my um, external piece until I get the Velcro. So I'm the same because I need the Velcro going down the spine. Yeah. So so we need to get Velcro. We you thought, would think we, somewhere. We thought we had it, but in this house we would have Velcro, but we can't find it. Yeah. So. It, it will show up. We'll get some and then immediately find it. Yeah. Okay. Last bit. Yes. Uh, thank you so much to everybody who gave us hat suggestions. Um, I have a list, which ultimately... I'm going to turn into a blog post with links because um, you guys were so great with all the bag suggestions. And this is not even all of them. But that was just from yesterday morning how many you guys had given me. And I know a whole bunch more have come in, so I have to add them to the list. Um, and then I, I will work on getting a blog post together with... Um, links to all the different patterns and uh, suggestions because some of them are better for tonal, some of them are better for, we'll work with uh, variegated. So, um, however, Mary Beth and I both cast one on. We picked the Shirestone hat by Mina Phillips, the knitting expat, because in her description, she describes exactly what we are looking for with having a brim that stays over your ears and um, not having to do uh, a fold over brim because you never can get the fold over proper uh, done properly so we both cast one on with December's colors so these are uh, the December fairy tale colors I am doing mine in Kiri and the trolls so that's what it looks like caked up and I managed to get three whole rows there's 40 rows of ribbing you have to do something to get that folded, uh, that uh, get the, the, the thick brim. Thick brim. Um, but that is my four rows so far. I also insisted upon finishing casting off my, binding off my sweater. So this is the night sky. And that is what I have gotten done so far. I'm probably six rows, five or six rows, but that's how it's looking. It's so, so cool. pretty. Yeah. I love this color. And mine, the speckles are going to, will really start to show up once I get a little more done. Yeah. So. Very excited about this. And we were walking the dogs last night in our warm woolly hats that uh, we had knit last year. Yeah. Because, you know, December. So. <laughs> and you can't have enough hats, so. Right. Bet, so I'm going to be knitting a lot these. of hats. Yes. Yes. So, thank you, everybody. Yeah. Uh, you guys really came out in spades with that. Yeah. Okay. I think that does it for us. Yeah. We have to go get ready to do the trivia thing tonight or this afternoon. And um, then we will be live tomorrow at 10 a.m. as part of Knit and Escape. Right. We That's our vendor session from 10 to 11. Um, and then I think we are done with that. Yep. Then we're right. the, That's, I think, as far as we go with it. Um, other than going in 
And visiting other people. Yeah, and seeing what everybody else is doing. Right. So. so we hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. Yes. I would say that it's baking day, but... It is baking day. It is baking day! Because <laughs> the holiday baking starts tonight. We get the holiday baking from last year. We were I don't care. It we didn't get I, we to don't see care. it. We haven't seen it. And it's, um, it's from last year, so it's got Noel and Sandy uh, and Paul and Prue and old contestants and the cast of the Dairy Girls. And we have seen season one of the Dairy Girls. We haven't seen season two yet, and it's hysterical. Yeah, if, um, uh, I've if seen you the, haven't seen that, you should. The preview of this holiday baking, and, I mean, the Dairy Girls are sharing drinks. There's at one point where Paul Hollywood is just bent over laughing so hard, so it looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, we're very, ex very excited about that. So, um, have to get our work done. Right. We hope you guys have a great day. Go forth and create. And we will see you on Monday. Bye. Bye.